scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Let it cover all the earth. Just meditate on this song for one minute. Let it cover all the earth. Shaliba Sabarin de Ketusi. Like the Azusa Street Reviver. Like the Welsh Reviver. We've read about many. It's time for us to be an extension of history. It's time for us to give life to prophecy. Let it not just be that in the days of Smith Wigglesworth, in the days of M.V. Semple McPherson, it is the same God yesterday, today. They have joined the cloud of witnesses. Now it's our turn and we cannot afford to fail. We must be faithful like faithful soldiers, like warriors furnished out of fire, prepared for battle. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are only seven continents in this globe. There are not 19. There are not 30. There are only seven continents upon the earth. Seven continents that is made up of about 7.8 billion living people. Technology has provided us access to be able to take the gospel, the life and the power of Jesus. Can I tell you, when Jesus returns, he's not going to ask you whether you're a millionaire. No, that's not the question you will hear. When Jesus comes, he's not going to ask you whether you are beautiful or ugly, whether you are an apostle or prophet. Those are not the questions he will ask. He will not ask you whether you are a professor or you are an undergraduate. Oh, mm, 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 mm. It is only what you have done with your life, your time, your resources, your energy, your influence, the degree to which the kingdom was established by reason of your being alive will be what will be marked that day. I'm saying this because there are many of us who flatter ourselves into believing that we are not called into the fivefold ministry and because of that we numb ourselves to the impulses of revival. Every time we hear and see the things that make for revival, we disconnect ourselves and just wish those fanatical Christians well. It is an unfortunate orientation. When it has to do with kingdom come, it is everybody's business. Are we together? I have taught you here that the end time revival is captured through a threefold prophetic formation. This is not my message tonight. I'm just communicating with you a burden that has remained with me. That number one, the first formation of the end time army are the prophetic intercessors. 
men and women who are called by God and granted the burden of nations not give me tea not give me bread not Lord I'm praying for no 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 these are people who God can take nations as projects and give them they can be praying for nations for years the Anna the prophetesses for instance these are these are the people you you will not see them on a crusade ground laying hands on anybody but they are the ones who bring Jesus to the earth number two are those who are the sent ones not just those in the fivefold ministry but those who are the witnesses the ambassadors in the marketplace and in mainstream ministry as we call it who use their creativity their wisdom the investments of the spirit upon them to directly frontier the purposes of the kingdom and then number three the last group in this prophetic formation of the army are the financial apostles men and women who understand the role of resources it is unfortunate look up please it is unfortunate that the church has to manipulate people today to get people's attention to give it's an embarrassment to our spiritual growth in many non-christian faith practices you don't have to coerce people and manipulate the moment there is a project people already have it in their minds you've heard me my understanding about wealth is not about acquiring cars and houses if the kingdom does not have the kingdom cannot stand because of your being wealthy it is absolute nonsense as far as kingdom come is concerned are we together now yes let me tell you the truth all this jumping around that people say i shall not die finish that scripture the bible says live and declare one of the one of the applications for longevity in this end time is to be in one or all three of this prophetic end time formation that you are an intercessor praying down revival there are people from the time we announced these conferences they've already begun to pray listen don't make a mistake of believing that this is just about ministry expansion you'll be making a mistake let me tell you some of us fear god oh and let me sincerely admit to you that some of us have been forged out of a place of fire our reputation died before we started so don't confuse everybody and think that this is just a wild quest to make a name god has given us a global influence enough to mark time if that was the goal this is we have not taken a step out of the cave go to europe and see what is happening to young people right now respectfully speaking mental health illnesses demons are just shipped there is a demography that spirits are sweeping some of your loved ones are part of that demography and if you keep quiet and fold your arms mama you don't want to be 60 and 70 and all the adults in your life are madmen because spirits were left unhindered not when we're alive mm -mm. not when we're alive so this is not just about koinonia no 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 there are people who died before this project started i have seen in my visions many times the cry of the spirit over europe there has to be a resurrection doing well in technology but dying spiritually the god right now in many many regions of the world is it and i do not downplay technology but hear me ladies and gentlemen fire needs to return fire needs to return where are women like deborah you don't even hear them again secular humanism all kinds of waste of time don't even talk about moral decadence that one is, is already is almost Abba. let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth let it cover all Let it cover One of the reasons why we're incorporating a session for pastors and leaders is because you see, 
when you study the spiritual history of a man it can explain why people are powerful and some are not i have met respectfully speaking and i don't say this to brag in any way it is with all honor and glory to god i have met sincere men of god as i travel across the world who love jesus christ with all their heart people of solid integrity and character but no empowerment this is a missing link on many pulpits there are people who have already given themselves to compromise our, our assignment is to lovingly draw their attention to return back to the cross in sincerity we don't condemn there are people who are determined to not change we wish them well and we trust that the power of god will draw them to the cross but there are sincere people who are wondering they love god but no salvation no healing no nothing some of you are watching right now as i'm speaking paul said i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ he calls it the power of god all this explanation without results there are people who need empowerment the greek seeks for a sign we live in a world right now where just talking about marketing a, a jesus like you are marketing orange juice will only bring you disappointment there has to be a move of authentic fire and grace men like E.M. Bounds, men like Charles G. Finney, who would step their feet upon that same soil. These were people who did not need to go to a radio station. The effulgence of the power that they carried, it was like a tornado. No matter where you were, if they were there, you would feel the heat that came from their spirit man. But you see, it's not just to complain and grumble. We must make our own contribution. This is what this is about. This is not about marketing a man of God and blindly marketing projects. And respectfully speaking, sometimes we men of God get ourselves into the trap of merchandising ourselves. And we forget that there is an assignment that is bigger than reputation. Let me use the opportunity to encourage younger ministers who are rising up. Be careful what you mentor and swallow in. God is in a serious business of seeing that the global harvest happens as we round up this age. Don't get into ministry if you plan to joke around. Ministry is not for jokers. Your heart must be with God. Not If you are looking for a reputation, go and write a book. You don't need to get into ministry. Ask and now give the nations to you. Oh Lord, that's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing your life. Hallelujah. You believe this? So make sure that you are part of this spiritual family. Plunge into what we are doing. Not everyone can travel to Europe or the US or Canada or any other nation, but you can pray. You can pray sincerely. Lord, who is the next prophet you are raising in UK? Let him come for that conference. Let them contact fire. We also contacted fire because some people prayed us into some conferences. We went there quietly and sat down, but the mantle still looked for us. Are we together? Listen, listen. Smith Wiggles was told Lester Sumro, and he said, do not die with the mantle on your head. He said, when you are old, find young men. Everybody will not be misbehaving. There will be disciplined young people who are worthy of your impartation. Find them, he says. When you find those young people, he said, transfer this grace. Don't die with it in your grave. The dishonor of many young people is the reason why fathers are dying with their anointings. It, they feel it is safer in the grave than on the head of a stubborn, arrogant person. That's the reason why we must trust God for grace to be humble. So that these fathers of faith, some of them are already seeing the formation of the cloud of witnesses coming to receive them. That they will not just live with their mantles and live a generation bankrupt of grace because of pride. This is not my message, oh. this is announcement. 
everything I'm saying is announcement. I'm announcing the UK conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you forever. I'll serve you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. To God be the glory and we look forward to an exceptional time in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So look forward to our official announcement. It's going to be a very quick one. We're only weeks away I can tell you from the conference and we trust that God will grant us grace to herald a new dimension of the move of the spirit across the UK, across Europe, and we trust that it will go far. That someday, if Christ tarries, we'll be able to look at the archives of history and see what we're able to do for Jesus. It will be said that someone got born again because someone said yes to Jesus. And for all of you who have been telling Jesus no forever, I'm giving you a caution. No, both in terms of salvation and to be used by him. The no I'm talking about is twofold. There are people who will never repent no matter what you preach. I pray that tonight will be that night that the Holy Ghost will break that stony heart finally. Are we together? It is a foolish thing to say no to Jesus. This is an advice. It's not an insult. It is a very foolish approach in life to say no to the King of Kings to the creator of the ends of the earth. No, the Bible says in the beginning God, not in the beginning you. You came as a product of time. It is arrogance to believe that I've come, I've, I'm educated now. I, I, I went to school or I was born and bred abroad. I do not need Jesus. Scripture says only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. Please listen to me. I'm, I'm speaking by the spirit. I believe that there is someone listening. There's someone watching. That God does not even want to wait till the end of the service. He's using this opportunity to speak to you now. You need to make it right with Jesus. You have to make it right with Jesus. This is not just about dying and going to heaven. This is about living a life of meaning. John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his then only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have life eternal 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved it says there is no other name under heaven that is given unto men by which we must be saved joshua selman's name cannot save you we are only ushers that lead you to the cross are we together everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late Someday, anyone who has rejected Jesus and continues to reject Jesus will have an opportunity to believe. Unfortunately, there is timing to salvation. The gates of salvation will not be open indefinitely and forever. A glorious morning will come when it might become too late. It is for this reason that Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. And he said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he says he will convict you he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment he says so for someone you came to church you just came as a well-wisher let me come and see what is happening in koinonia or maybe you went to a family where they are connecting or you passed and saw a projector somewhere and people are just watching the lord allowed that so that you will hear this this may be your message tonight that he's calling you genuinely to make it right with Jesus. 
It says, he that denies me before men, I will deny before my father and his holy angels. A day will come, you will wake up in the morning and it will not be your office you're on your way going to again. A day will get, you wake up and it will not be koinonia you are coming to again. When this life is folded like a curtain, the only thing that matters is your stand with God. I think I should finish this evangelical message and do an altar call right now. I'm almost there. Praise the name of the Lord. Now listen very carefully. Aside from the fact that Jesus is coming soon, which is true, I want to assure you that Satan and the cohorts of this world have legitimate dominion and authority over your life except and unless you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness according to scripture are we together into the kingdom of light even the kingdom of his dear son what then is salvation is more than just chanting and confessing the lordship of jesus salvation starts by an acknowledgement of the fact that you are incapacitated that you do not have the power to help yourself by yourself the bible clearly tells us that if we say we do not have any sin we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us but that if we confess our sins that god is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness this is what the bible says the conclusion over all men is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God this is what the Bible says and the Bible says that the wages of sin is death it says but the gift of God is eternal life even in Christ Jesus hallelujah the assignment of a believer or the assignment of one who is in need of salvation is to believe the gospel what is the gospel that the father loved you so much he gave Jesus as a mediator to be able to come and die for your sins, the penalty, the condition for having the life of God and being saved from eternal damnation is that you must have righteousness equal to that of Jesus. And by the works of the law and the works of the flesh, no man is able to attain unto that status of righteousness. So Jesus came and through the exchange of his death, burial and resurrection, he's granted us access to his righteousness. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. This is the Bible. What is your responsibility now? Is found in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9. What saith you that the word is near your in your heart and in your mouth? That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, it says, Thou shalt be saved. The law is in verse 10. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let me give you an opportunity right now. Let's do the altar call before we preach. You know, those days, when people got born again, because of the fire that came from the salmon, you would see people broken to their spirits. But right now, you make a lot of altar call and you see others interrupting others on stage from even getting born again. They come on stage and all they are doing is carrying their phone. They want to snap the cloth the man of God is wearing. That's why we men of God must go back and receive genuine apostolic fire. Something is wrong with these games we keep playing. I'm saying it again and I'm saying it respectfully speaking. When people were born again, you could trust what happened to them. The power, the impact of what happened. So you would see 180 degrees transformation immediately for many. But God is helping us. So I'm going to make an altar call. You can sit down and assume you did not hear what I said. But the Holy Ghost has been speaking to you. Some of you are in this auditorium right now. Some of you are in all the overflows down to the basement outside and numerous people following online 
as I began to speak to you, the Holy Ghost told you this is it. He's shown you through dreams. He's shown you through visions. Do not wait until it is too late. Jesus is calling you. You have met the man of God. Now it's time for you to meet the Savior and the God of that man. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know why God decided to take this dimension. We just started talking about UK. And now it is leading to someone's salvation. That is the way of the Spirit. John chapter 3 and verse 8. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where the sound, sound thereof, you cannot tell whence it cometh or where it's going. So is one that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to make an altar call and count one to five. Wherever you are, don't wait for anybody to be the first. You came to church. You may be old, you may be young, you may be educated, uneducated, rich, poor with all the love in my heart and every sense of seriousness as far as your eternal destiny is concerned i want to make this call let your eyes look straight on jesus and i want you to run and come and stand here as i count one to five don't sit back when you know your ways are not right with jesus one come come to jesus Run to Jesus. Don't let anybody be as, make you feel bad. Come with confidence in your heart. He's able to give you a new beginning. Come. Come. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I'm withholding nothing. Let's celebrate them as they come. Will you give yourself away? That's what the Holy Spirit is asking you tonight. Will you give yourself away so he can use you? listen please look at me ladies and gentlemen the days of acting drama of salvation is fading away from the church we are trusting God for genuine authentic salvations that when people come and stand before Jesus Christ they are standing before the savior of their soul sincerely that the prayer you are going to be praying would not just be the recitation from a man oh say lord jesus lord jesus i believe i believe amen <clears throat> genuine and sincere salvation Look at my beautiful daughter. Look at this little girl. Can you imagine coming to stand for Jesus? Whether she knows what she's doing or not, that is the safest place for her to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. I salute every one of you, my brothers and sisters, for making this noble call. You see, this is your family. When you come to make this, to honor this clarion call, don't see it as though you're on your way to a funeral. No. You are about to receive the greatest gift that can be given to any man under heaven. Not a thing, a person. Jesus himself. Hallelujah. If I pray for you for healing, I prophesy upon your life or I pray for prosperity, I only gave you things. But when you have him, And I, I'm desperate for you. Just sing it one time and I'll pray for them. And I, I'm lost without you. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, 
he will in no wise cast away. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Everybody who is genuinely saved had this moment in their lives. My call for you is that while you make these declarations, mean it from your heart. No matter what has happened in your life or not happened, when you come to Jesus, the Son of the living God, He is able to give you a new beginning. And for someone who is following online, let this be your chance. Don't say next week. Don't say miracle service. Now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. There's no guarantee for tomorrow. But now is a gift that was given by God to remedy for yesterday. Lift your right hand if you can, all of you. All who are in the overflow, down to the basement, outside, following online. Please lift your hand. Thank you for making this decision for Jesus. I see those of you outside and all other overflows. God bless you. Lift your hands. Say this after me and let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I'm a child of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for my precious, loving brothers and sisters who have come out responding to this call and the many others who are scattered across the globe who are following. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you and I administer, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. Satan, take your hands off their lives from today. You have no power and legal ground over them. In the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ. And in the name of Jesus, you are also recipients of the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness, and you reign in life. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. There are two of you here. I just saw spirits appear. And the Lord is saying I should get them out of you. You heard their confessions of faith. And I command out of them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. So I congratulate all of you. In the name of Jesus. The son of the living God. For... Those under the anointing, that's all right. When they are fine, we can pick them. Ushers, well done. God bless you. Let me request that you please look to your left, which will be my right. There will be a group of people there. And by the way, Zaria is connecting. Our Zaria family is connected. I, I want to believe that there are people who have also made that decision right now. And so counselors, please manage them. All of you, may I request that you please move to my right, which will be your left. You will have a minute or two with the counselors and I promise you, you'll be back to your seat. Those under the anointing, just hold them gently. Let's handle them carefully. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap for salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Has this inspired someone? We thank the Lord. The price for every soul is the blood of Jesus. Every soul. Every one of these precious people is equal the blood of Jesus. And we thank the Lord. And for all of you who invited them to church, may God honor you. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, it says that they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Scripture says that he that winneth souls is wise. Not just he that makes wise decisions. He that winneth souls is wise. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I've taken from my time, so it's my intention again to see how 
we make progress. I was impressed with the help of God over us last week. And let's see how we obtain that help today again in Jesus' name. It's not a promise, it's a commitment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm teaching tonight very briefly now because um, it is the assignment of the apostolic and the prophetic to equip God's people um, per time, per season, to give wisdom on how to be able to navigate the times. And one of the things that you receive here is not just doctrine, but spiritual intelligence. Are we together? Doctrine comes from the word doctrina. It means a preset body of truth that turns a student to be knowledgeable. And there are several doctrines in the Bible. Foundationally, there are about six of them according to Hebrews chapter 6. And when you exhaust those doctrines, you can now move into perfection where you now begin to deal with other weightier matters of the spirit. And the Lord stared it in my heart since last week to be to teach on what I'm about to teach on. It is, it is my desire and prayer tonight that by this teaching, the Lord will quicken our discernment and that he's going to help us to be more circumspect and more accurate as far as our spiritual adventure is concerned. If you believe that with me, shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. I want to teach tonight on the subject that I titled the tribe of Issachar. Give us amplified. The tribe of Issachar. This is a teaching that is going to work upon our discernment and help us to be people of stature in the spirit. And I want you to please follow along. We're going to do a lot of prayers intermittently. And then after the teaching, glad we've taken the altar call. So we have some time to press a bit. It says, and of Issachar, men who had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. It says 200 chiefs and their kinsmen were under their command. Let's go back to KJV. Father, grant us grace even by your spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about a very strange tribe. It calls it the sons of Issachar. And then the Bible tells us three things about these men that become prophetic lessons for us to learn as we seek to mature in spiritual things. The Bible says there were men that had understanding of the times. Very incredible credential that there were men that had understanding not just of things, but they had understanding of times. And then the Bible says that there were people who did not only have understanding of the times, they knew what Israel ought to do as per those times and seasons. And the Bible says the heads of them were 200. And as a result of their understanding of the times and the knowledge of what to do, the Bible says all their brethren were at their commandment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the dominion systems in this kingdom, and especially as it concerns living in the cosmos, is the ability to understand the ways of the spirit. To have spiritual intelligence enough to be able to discern times and to discern seasons. There are many people whose lives ministries businesses right now have crash landed simply because they did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand and to interpret times hallelujah i have said it many times and it bears repeating again that god is a god of times and seasons please write it down 
in the dealing of God with man, he's fragmented his dealings to work with the law of times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. That means everything under heaven functions as a product of time and seasons. We have in Nigeria here what we call the rainy season. We have the dry season, the two main seasons. Across the globe, they have all kinds of seasons, autumn, spring, summer, winter, you know. And, and there are many things that happen across those seasons. A good farmer takes advantage of the seasons for the productivity of his crops or animals. There are seasons that naturally come with certain advantages. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says that among the many things that could be said of these sons of Issachar, the men of this tribe is that number one, please write it down, that they were men who understood the times. They had an understanding, not as an individual, can you imagine, as a corporate people, that there was a structure within their tribe that helped them to understand times. So the first thing we see about this tribe of Issachar is that there were men who had understanding of times. They knew how to maximize times and seasons because they understood the times. Number two, the Bible says to know what Israel ought to do. So it's one thing to understand the times, but to be able to draw out a strategy that becomes an advantage within that time. That is the second thing that they had. The Bible says to know. They had knowledge. They had strategy to know what Israel ought to do. So they had an understanding of the times. Number two, they knew what Israel ought to do. And the Bible says as a result, there was dominion. Dominion. Their brethren had to be at their command for direction. Give us Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, please. This is the creation story. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 that God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Please pay attention. And it says, let these lights be for signs and let these lights be for seasons and let these lights be for years, for days and let these lights be for years. You know what this meant? Let me tell you this. I've read this for I don't know how long, but the Lord opened my eyes and notice that timing was fragmented into day and night and then signs seasons days years and the bible says for every one of them there is a kind of light that signifies when it is day there is a kind of light that signifies when it is night there is a kind of light that signifies years and special signs even in the heavenlies So the first thing that we see the sons of Issachar having is what I wrote here as discernment that came through understanding. Please write it down. Discernment through understanding. Discernment through understanding. The Bible said they understood the times and that that discernment came through understanding most people are unable to maximize seasons please listen in their lives because they are bankrupt of discernment what is discernment the faculty of spiritual perception please write it down that when we say you are somebody who has discernment it means you have trained your organs to be able to perceive the impulses of the spirit discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to know what God is doing the ability to know what the devil is doing the ability to know what is happening even within the cosmos 
is called discernment. It is a superior faculty that the believer in partnership with the Holy Spirit can sustain. And the Bible lets us know that one of the indices for measuring the maturity of a believer is the strength of your discernment. Are we still together? That strong meat belongs to them who are of full age, it says, who by reason of use have exercised themselves to discern between good and evil. It takes discernment to know what is really good and it takes discernment to know what is really evil because as far as the cosmos is concerned, good can look like evil and evil can look like good. Are we together? So this tribe of Issachar trained themselves. They stepped up their, their discernment their ability to perceive things happening within the heavenlies. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is no believer I know who can excel consistently when you are dull of discernment. The world is too spiritual for you to excel bankrupt of discernment. Respectfully speaking, there are people who have died today that they shouldn't have died if they had discernment. Am I right on that? Yeah. There are many, many things that have happened around our lives, ministries, businesses, homes that are credited directly to the absence of discernment. The ability to read the writings on the wall, the ability to know what the Holy Spirit is saying per time. There are businesses that many of us should not have gotten into if you had discernment. Now, watch this. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly. You know, that some in the latter time will deviate from the truth and they will give themselves to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. My expression there is the fact that the spirit speaketh expressly. The Holy Ghost is not always talking, but the Holy Ghost speaks. But many people have not trained their discernment to recognize the voice of God. You may want to make reference to my teaching, the voice of God. I did a teaching there helping us to understand that when we talk about the voice of God, we don't just mean the speakings of God. We mean every spiritual mechanism that can be used by God to communicate his will and his intents to the believer. It's called the voice of God. So the voice of God is not just limited to the sounds of God. It is, it is a holistic capture of every mechanism that can be deployed by God to communicate his intent to the believer. The objective of the voice of God is that the believer comes into the awareness of the will of God. Because the jurisdiction to enjoy God's power, God's favor, God's grace is being at the center of the will of God. In fact, the assignment of God's power is to bring you from wherever you are into the will of God. Are we together? So many believers have not been able to train their discernment. There are many fathers today who the realm of the spirit kept showing them that an attack was coming on their children and because they did not train themselves spiritually to discern they could not do anything about it there are many people who by signs similitudes scripture dreams god has been showing them several things positive things to happen and negative things to avert but because they have not trained themselves to discern let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that in these end times, it is costly to be dull of discernment. It can cost you your life. Hallelujah. Jesus looks at Nathaniel, a man who just finished insulting him. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And he looks at Nathaniel and here's what he says. An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. It takes discernment to speak like that. Jesus looks at the man called Peter. 
And even though he saw a spirit behind Peter, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And he said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. In other words, there is nothing wrong with you as a person. Your compassion and your good heart is an advantage for the kingdom. But I need to separate you from this ugly spirit that is trying to destroy you. Discernment. In the book of Acts, the Bible talks about the apostles. Paul. Are we together now? Yes. How that a damsel came and met them and this damsel was using divination and bringing money and gains for her people. And when she saw them, she began to preach that these are the men of God who have brought glad tidings. You find that in Acts chapter 16. The first 24 verses talk about the, the Bible says this happened for many days. And one time he got angry, angry in his spirit. Are we together now? And he looked at her, Paul now, being grieved in his spirit. He commanded that spirit to come out of her. That's how they landed in the prison that they used praise and worship to come out of. This was what got them there. Hallelujah. Many people are dull of discernment. There are some of us who never seem to get free from trouble. You walk headlong into trouble. Every scheming of darkness against you walks because there is no discernment. When the Holy Ghost is saying pray, you are not even sure he's the one speaking. And quite honestly, you don't care until you land into trouble. There are many people about to start journeys that the Holy Spirit keeps pointing to them. It does not have to be a journey that ends you in danger. We are talking with respect to the will of God, not good or bad. There are many things that you will arrive well and yet you are already dead. Once it is not the will of God, you are still in trouble. So you, we don't rate life based on good or bad. We rate life based on the will of God or outside of the will of God. There are many, if the devil wants to destroy you, he will schedule many good things to happen in your life that are outside the will of God. Are we together? For instance, giving you a visa. When is the will of God for you to be in Nigeria? Now, that may not be an evil thing, sociologically speaking. But you will travel not only out of the will of God, out of your destiny, out of so many things. Why didn't God stop Jonah from entering the boat? When Jonah was paying for the boat, I can imagine that every passenger that was entering that boat, they, I'm sure the angels were saying, oh God, so all your business, Oga, is for nothing. You are about to lose your property because one person got a boat and was on his way going. And then when the people were throwing everything, he kept quiet and was sleeping. It was when they casted lots and it fell on him. He said, truly, okay, let me talk now. I am a prophet. God sent me to Nineveh. But I know God is a merciful God. If I talk to them, they will repent. I don't want them to hear the message so that you will help me and punish them. So what do we do with you now? Throw me out. You thought the people say, ah, that's too much. They threw him out. They had lost their property and everything. Are we together? Thank God you're a prophet. They threw him out. Listen, God has helped us to come thus far today by this faculty of discernment. I look back at my life and I can see where glory and shame was separated by the distance of a needle, only waiting for discernment. That if you had taken one wrong step, your life would have crash landed for nothing. Hear me, God is speaking to someone in this end time right now, the believer must train yourself and i'm going to teach you how you must train yourself to step up your discernment you can have five people come even if it is judas not every kiss is a sign of love a kiss that is supposed to be a sign of love and intimacy can be a strategy to the enemy the one i'm kissing is the one that must die when he came and kissed jesus jesus looked at him and said you betray your master with a kiss he didn't say sorry. He didn't say anything. He just left him. There, for some of you who put your cheek for everybody, you need to um, you understand it's a figurative statement. 
some of us are so fragile emotionally that even when the devil brings his mouth near you you just believe that every sign of a kiss means love no sir no sir no sir every handshake is not a handshake of fellowship there are handshakes that are that they are signals of deception every prophecy is not prophecy that edifies you no matter how it sounds it is the ministry of the spirit behind it it is not everything that glitters that is gold are we together now say discernment please shout it say discernment there are many children today whose destinies would not have been wasted, respectfully speaking, if their parents had discernment. Remember what happened when Samson was about to be born. Manoah asked a question and they said, no, 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 please, let the angel return and give us details as to this child. We know that since this child came by prophecy, he would not be an ordinary child and instructions came that he would be a Nazarene and his hair would not be cut. And that became the symbol of his strength until he decided to kill himself by himself. Are we together now? Listen to me. Every mantle and every destiny has the, the spiritual code of operation that protects that oil. Listen, let me share with you a, a powerful secret. There is a consecration for every mantle. It's not enough to know you have a mantle. You must know the formula given by God to protect it. There are certain graces that is in the place of worship that that anointing is released. You can be anointed and you do not know by discernment what activates the working of the spirit within you. And you will find out your life will look like you are not called. Are we together? There are people because of the kind of destiny you have. For you, the formula God gives you is every time you want to see a miracle, hold hands with your husband or your wife and agree. That is it. No matter what deception, once two of you hold your hands and pray, the truth must come out. It may not be a formula for everybody, but by discernment, you can step into what becomes your secret code of operation. Unbelievers know this, but many, many believers are bankrupt. When it was time for the prophet to prophesy, he did not feel like prophesying. He said, bring me a mistrel. And as soon as they began to pray a mistrel, the Bible said the hand of the Lord. He didn't say the hand of the Lord was coming anyway. He understood the secrets that provoked the hand of the Lord. Are we together? Those who lack discernment in this end time, ladies and gentlemen, whether as men of God, whether as business people, one operation of the spirit of discernment can be the difference between victory or defeat in the life of a believer. Some of you are about to get into businesses right now that will make you cry from March till December. You've not had discernment. You don't care. Some of you are about to drive good people in your life because you do not have discernment to see. Everybody who comes to me must be a millionaire and someone will come looking like, like someone who just came out of prison. Whereas that's the person the anointing is on to help you. But because you lack discernment, some of you have driven everybody holding the key to your door. Now you are wondering why the door does not open. Because if you see John the Baptist, he does not look like a prophet. He will come with rags and sometimes we're eating locusts and wild honey who wants to be a friend to such a man however that's the man god has chosen are we together i remember when god started speaking about coming to abuja i've shared with you that story to help you it took three years of wrestle wrestle before that time, I could be having a program somewhere. I would travel into Zaria, arrive around 5.36, go and have a meeting, and then by the next day, I'm out of the way again. But when it began to come, I said, Ah, God, what is this one again? I struggled with the Spirit verifying and re-verifying and re-verifying. When God finally gave me the verification, I went with my eyes closed. Listen, let me tell you the truth. 
for some of you God is speaking to you right now you are taking too many careless destiny steps and ignoring discernment the mercy of God has been shielding you but I don't know who I'm speaking to you need to mark time speed is not the same as rushing listen do you know that speed is a function of clarity of direction or clarity of destination if you are looking for a house say you enter a close or an avenue once you don't know the house you slow down is that true Be so that you don't pass it not knowing and then you honestly ask questions you can now ask someone sorry where is the birthday celebration happening oh turn left right you see that blue car that's the house the moment the direction is clear there's no limitation to speed again there are many of you you have not gotten direction for ministry yet there are many gray areas around your life and yet you are running for you a prophetic word tonight is you need to slow down because the distance you will need to turn back on it may be too far you are already running speed in the wrong direction is adding burden to yourself is someone getting what i'm saying now discernment who told you is god's will for you to be in uk who told you is god's will for you to be in abuja i've told you ladies and gentlemen please hear me greener pasture is not a physical location greener pasture is where the voice of god is for you there are people suffering in every nation including our dear nation it is not a physical location that this that 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 um that that spells out your prosperity but where the voice of the lord is he said the lord is my shepherd i shall not want and isaac sowed in that land hallelujah our fathers of old some of them were not very educated but they would never do anything until they verify the subject of god said was strong in their generation god has not spoken to me oh thank you for what you have said but let me inquire of the lord it is the reason why they had they had tremendous success with their lives our generation now respectfully is so scientific we say wisdom is profitable to direct and our wisdom is sophia not divine wisdom it has been landing us in all kinds of trouble god is speaking to someone you want to follow the order of that tribe of issachar you must slow down in your life and be sure of the voice of god before you take steps in your life and destiny is someone listening to what i'm saying man of god don't assume it is time to start church what makes you think you should start church all my contemporaries even sons that i raise in ministry they are in ministry so what anna the prophetess how many people do you think she raised and yet she remained in the temple ah, may you never go where god is not oh i'm praying for you may you never go where god is not Amen. hallelujah moses said do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us you see let me tell you life will propose so many wonderful things they don't have to be evil i repeat the journey of discernment is not about good and bad alone please hear me let me repeat it again the journey of discernment is not about good or bad alone it's about being in the will of god lack of discernment will lead you to many good things that will end up becoming a burden to your destiny because they are not luggages that were allocated for you to carry your flight will be impeded because you have carried all kinds of things hallelujah i believe in common sense i'm not a fool but i believe in the voice of god i'm also not a fool are we together common sense has landed people in trouble the oldest man on earth today is not more than 120 years i'm, I'm not sure the highest i saw was 141 along the road to equity who just died but i don't know guinness book of record or what what's that that thing i don't know who they have as the world oldest person but let me tell you the truth this scripture is old and the spirit of god is he was there when creation began trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says lean not on your own understanding verse 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path 
7 says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil for there is a way that seemeth right unto a man the bible declares he says but the end thereof are the ways of death there are many people who have no business being poor today their problem was not intellectual bankruptcy their problem was that they do not sustain the ability to discern in the days of noah whether you were a businessman whether you were an architect whether you were a politician after 120 days you were going to die if you were not in the boat you are not in the ark it's as simple as that there are times and moments in history ladies and gentlemen where it is not about the wisdom of the wise it is about the ability to discern the voice and the will of god my prayer for myself and my prayer for this ministry all the time is that i find myself at the epicenter of the will of god now let me tell you the truth there is a risk if you embrace the way of discernment. There will be a lot of disruption to what you call order in your life. If you are not willing to endure that disruption, then forget about a glorious life. Hmm. Are we together? Do you know what would have happened to Joseph? We never heard of Joseph and the exploits of his carpentry again. That man just received the burden of fathering Jesus to maturity and had to sacrifice a lot. But he knew that he was in the will of God. What of Mary? I'm sure as a young virgin, the girl just had a plan towards her life and destiny. Listen, I, I pray for our generation. May we not be too organized to the point that God cannot bring us now to fit the mold of his will for us let's be careful with this over dependence on intellect i submit to you that when god started with us this was not let me tell you the truth the way of the spiritual man is very very strange there are many times in the journey you don't even know where you are going to you have to depend on the one leading you not an assurance of where you are going you trust the person more than the destination follow me is the mission we live in a world today that is full of guarantees. Can you guarantee me that if something happens? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are we learning? The men of Issachar had understanding of the times. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern. You must know how to discern lord this business idea looks wonderful and my brain seems to agree with it but can you give me a moment let me go to god in the place of prayer and hear what he has to say god will only take responsibility for what he initiated if you initiate it it means you are vetted that you have the power to manage the outcomes that come there hallelujah That is why we lack power in the body of Christ. It is not about physical strength. It is about discernment. More love. More power. More of you in my life. More love. More power. More of you in my life. Let me tell you how God trained us. At the beginning of every season, we used to teach people those days that your birthdays are not time to just jump around and put balloon and celebrate. Balloon is only after you have spoken with God. Three days, two days to people's birthdays, they will go and lock themselves. Lord, what is the next phase of my life? But right now, people celebrate their birthday one year in advance and God is not in it. And they move back 10 years. Pastors will lock themselves and go and pray to fast, not just for power. Lord, what are you saying? This is how we got here. I'm telling you sincerely. Do you know what the next five years is going to be like? Do you know what the next 10 years is going to be like? I've shared with you my story. When God in this, this was when, you know, internet was in its infancy. 
when God gave us an instruction to carry our audio teachings, put it online, and his angel will take it across the nation. And that was it. Discernment. That one step opened up doors of untold opportunities. God is speaking to someone. It's not because you cannot see the power of God. It's because you have thrown away the value of the voice of the spirit and discernment. There are, you don't hear again that someone locked himself. Where are you? I'm spending time with God for three days. What for? I need to get direction for the next season of my life. Our over-dependence on brain work is what is making us failures. I'm saying this respectfully speaking. More love. That's what we want to see. More power. More of you in my life. A year or two before we moved to Abuja, I remember when we started having so many visits from the U.S., a group of people came from U.S. and they came, they went back with such zeal and transformation and they did not even tell me. They went to open an office for me in the U.S. And then they just announced as a good news that Apostle, just to let you know that we have opened an office for you. In fact, um, you can be sure right now that when you come to the U.S., there is an office, say breakthrough. No, no, I'm not being sarcastic. That's what most people will call it. What do you call that kind of favor? Remember, we are advocates of favor. But I said, thank you for that opportunity. Let me carry my good old childish principle that has worked so far. Lord, what are you saying? God did not even waste his time. And said, there, there is a way you walk with God, Ba. As you are approaching him, you are, you are, your heart is so connected. God does not need to start wasting his time talking to you like an unbeliever. It's like a husband and a wife. There's a way a wife already knows the answer. Honey, she stops there. You already know what the answer is. You can grow into that level of intimacy with the spirit. I hope you know what I'm saying now. That someone is conjuring an enchantment against you and an energy comes upon you. You wake up in the night, you can't explain what is it, but that no divination, no enchantment against you. Abba, sit down and just say, This person is no. Scriptures like arrow just fire out from your spirit. Is someone learning? Hear me. The order of Issachar is the survival pattern for the last days. You need to master the art of spiritual perception. You must be so close to the Holy Ghost that you can, you can perceive the impulses of the spirit. This looks like an open door, but I don't know why there is a restraint in my spirit. Even though it's a great door, please keep it open. Let me go back to God. God, what do you have to say? And you stay there till he speaks. You don't let your tiredness answer you on behalf of God. And you say, I've prayed for three hours. I assume he say yes. No. Are we together? This was the secret of the, the valiancy of great men in the Bible. Should I pursue? They will go and inquire of God. Many non-Christians and diviners do that till today. They will never take any action, whether in business, in whatever, until they have an assurance from heaven. Let me tell you this. Some of us that you see that look like we are great, I confess to you, I'm speaking to the globe, it is not because of anything in ourselves. We have simply mastered the childishness of staying till his voice comes. Mm, staying till his voice comes. But when that voice comes, 
it comes with tremendous power and energy according to Ezekiel 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me so you can find a man look so slow in destiny but in two months God will do something with that person that will cover up for 10 years and you are wondering from whence came this energy the energy came with the voice the energy came with the voice these are missions to UK, you see, and the US. It was already on plan for a few years. Shared it with the leaders. I'm sure they are used to me now. Once I say we'll do something and you hear me keep quiet about it, just leave me and God like that. I just kept quiet since God kept quiet. But when the word came, it came with energy. It came with power. Man of God, don't assume because everybody is doing conferences, you get up and go and do it. Don't assume because everybody is opening branches, you go and do it. I'm saying this respectfully speaking. Don't assume. No. Father, according to your prophetic program for me, how many children should I have? Ah, I went to school. How can I be asking God how many children? You'll be surprised that in God's mind is three. You now go and give birth to five. Those two, of course, God is merciful. But you will be surprised the, the headache you will get from the remaining two. And you are now asking, God, is this how you want to punish me? I'm sorry if I'm touching an area that is a bit touchy. But it's, it's very important. Hallelujah. Three days before Koinonia will start, before the service, I went back to God again to pray crying my heart before him and i said god i'm human i can make mistakes please if it is not you and it is not your voice i pray and i cry unto you that you will speak to me and i vow on that god if god had told me he was not the one i would have come here and apologized before the whole world i'm not too proud to say sorry discernment discernment to know what you ought to do you need to go back right now and start re-examining your life in light of this thing. And you'll find out that some of you have been running anyhow. Anything that comes, once it makes sense, you jump at it. No, spiritual men don't work like that. It is not to make you judgmental. There are times you maximize opportunities, don't get me wrong. But a spiritual man is one who discerns. Okay? This is a great business. Would you give me one night? Let me just pray. Let me just seek counsel. No, no, it must be now. Tell the person, may God bless you. God who supplies Jehovah Jireh, he will come back again. Don't put yourself in any kind of anything that needs your being too fast that you even have to throw God out is already bringing trouble. Speed without God is a highway to destruction. Make sure he's the one who becomes the captain of your speed. Is someone learning let us become a people of discernment it will help you to know what to be part of it will help you to know what to not be part of don't jump at things because of the physical expression and the flamboyancy that they carry spiritual people do not work like that it is not to make you this teaching is not to make you judgmental I hope you understand what I'm saying yes but you must learn to be spiritual you must learn to be spiritual you will know what kind of gift to accept. Someone can come and give you a gift. And you look at it. And something you should be glad about. You see, Ba, once you invest in building your spirit, respect the impulses that come from that spirit. Why am I being troubled over something that should give me joy? You may not know what it is, but just stop where you are and go back to the place of prayer lord this job that is supposed to give me joy is it just human fear or it is you restraining me how can i get a contract of 20 billion i should be rejoicing but now i'm i'm tomorrow i'm going to collect the award letter and i cannot sleep in the night if it's an attack let me cast it what is there but let me tell you what many of us will do. You will first send the text, Apostle, there's a spirit fighting my breakthrough. It cannot be the will of God that I got 20 billion naira. Stand up and pray with me, oh. 
and you see the thing about God ba, because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit his assignment is to restrain you according to the level of your yieldedness the moment you begin to struggle with the Holy Ghost it is fearful when God leaves you to yourself <clears throat> if you're with me please say amen. amen I don't know why God is speaking this to someone but this is a very serious prophetic message for someone tonight What was the second thing they did? The sons of Issachar. The Bible says they had the strategy for the season to know what Israel ought to do. It's not enough to have discernment. Please hear me. Dominion is strategy dependent. Write it down. Dominion in the cosmos is strategy dependent. For every height, every mountain every level in the spirit you must go through the sacrifice of alignment to receive the strategy that commands and maintains dominion per season hear me just because the red sea parted does not mean if you stand before jordan for you it means the sea should part for you the strategy will be an energizing of the spirit to walk on water don't assume that because the Red Sea parted, every time you stand before a sea, you say it parted. That is not the only formula. Just because Samson carried the jawbone of a donkey and killed 3,000 Philistines does not mean, oh Elisha, that when they surround you, the strategy will be to fight. There are times it will be to make them blind and lead them to Samaria where they will eat and give you rest. Do you have the strategy? Warriors in the Bible were people who paid the price to receive strategy. Joshua circumcised himself and all the men that came out of Egypt, of uh, uh, the Israelites that came out of Egypt, and they waited for the arrival of the captain of the Lord's army. When he arrived, he gave them a strategy. He said, if it is Jericho you are going to bring down, don't try to fight them, they will kill you. Jericho is a strong city. Here is the formula, go round once. Just once, every day. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salas kade bash kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto break kate kate kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.